pencil pass maybe. Great pleasure to welcome you on behalf of the Taylor and Barnes family. You're all here today to celebrate Mac and Melissa and their true love for one another. It is a tremendous blessing. You're all here today because of your love for them. And we're here today together because of God's love for all of us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for love. We thank you that you are the God of love and you are the God of life. We pray, Father, that as we celebrate this life, this marriage, this love, that we would look to you, the author of life and the author and giver of love. Father, bless this ceremony. Bless Merrick and Alyssa's life and bless the congregation as we look to you for instruction, 
and life, prosperity, and loving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I have the special honor of sharing a little bit of God's Word with you all as we are about to celebrate this marriage and unite these two in holy matrimony. And we would all do well to consider God's instruction for marriage when we think of marriage. We do well because God is the author of marriage. He is the designer of marriage. And there's one thing that today that you may not know about marriage that you need to know for sure. And I'm going to divulge that to you in just a moment as we go to God's Word. First of all, something you need to know about marriage is that God is the author of marriage. God is the author of marriage. In fact, God is the father of the first bride. And God himself gave Eve to Adam. We find this in Genesis chapter 2. We find that God presented the first bride to the first husband. God himself, he created Eve specifically for Adam. And he brought her to him. And just like Merrick is expecting his bride, just like Merrick is waiting with eager anticipation to see his bride come down this aisle, so too was Adam. Let me just read you a portion of that scripture in Genesis chapter 2. Beginning in verse 18, then the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. Out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the sky, and he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called a living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all the cattle, to the birds of the sky and every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper suitable for him. So Adam, naming all these creatures, seeing them come by two by two, each with their suitable helper, each with their mate, each with the one specifically designed for them, wondered about himself. What about me? God had something very, very special for the pinnacle of his creation. He had someone very special in mind indeed. So the Lord, verse 21 says, So the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. He then took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh at that place. The Lord God fashioned into a woman the rib which he had taken from the man and brought her to the man. Watch Adam's beautiful reaction. The man said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, and she shall be called woman because she is, was taken out of man. For this reason, Adam said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. It's an incredible story to think about what God has done. God the Father creates man and woman, designed for one another, in love to be joined together in an endless relationship. Marriage is a picture of Jesus Christ and his bride. The amazing thing about this picture is that God is very jealous of it. God designed this picture to be upheld and to be revered and honored. And this picture that God creates through a marriage is to be holy and separate and faithful and true and righteous and good and to bring forth life, to bring life and to be a place of deep love deep sharing. 